This was a real position from a game that I just played a day ago. And the question is, can these three isolated pawns actually win against the king and the knight, or does black have a way to save the game and get a draw? If you would like to pause, maybe just think through that for 30 seconds or a minute. What do you think the winning idea should be here, and how can I win this position as white? Then I'm going to show you the game, how we ended up in this crazy position, and ultimately talk about, well, what should have happened in this game, but did not happen in the game. All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, let's actually go back to the beginning and see how do we end up in this, this mess here. So I played e4, and my opponent played the Petrov. Now, this is not an opening that I've really studied too much. I'm not that familiar with it. So I wanted to play something to hopefully get my opponent out of their comfort zone early. And the normal approach here is you take the pawn, you go back, after d6, black, you know, gets your pawn. It's just a big trade, right? This is what everybody does, and I figured my opponent was going to be much more familiar with this than I was. So I decided to play a gambit here where you sacrifice this knight. And it's a questionable gambit because generally when you give up a piece for two pawns like that, you need to have a bit more of an attack. And obviously I'm not really positioned to attack. All my pieces are still stuck on the back. But this is a different kind of gambit because it's sort of like a long-term compensation that we get for giving up our knight. The king is can't castle, right? And we also get these two central pawns. And I'm basically saying, look, even though I lose a knight, I'm getting this stuff in return. Let's see what happens. And in a blitz game, three minute blitz game, I felt like it was good enough. So let's see how, how did this go. Knight comes out. I threw in a check. And here I saw the opportunity to make a trade, which generally you don't want to do when you're ahead. But in this case, it was an opportunity to bring the king out. So I said, let's let's do it. Now we have the king on e6. I'm like, okay, let's keep going. I'm going to castle. I'm playing d3. Again, I'm not like going for an immediate checkmate. There's no, There's no checkmate. I'm just trying to develop my pieces and start to use these two extra pawns that I have. Bishop comes out, bishop comes out, rook to f8, f4, knight to d4, and here I said to myself, okay, Nelson, you want to attack the king, but how do you do that? Well, the pawn is in the way. I would love to be able to use like a rook or a queen to make something happen here, but I can't because my pawn's in the way. So I decided to just trade it, like just push it forward. It's a fork here. I'm going to be able to capture something. And once I get rid of that pawn, well, now we've opened up the e-file for the the big pieces, right? The heavy duty rooks and the queen. Okay, great. So my opponent captured, I recaptured. And here, I think my opponent panicked a little bit because now the files are starting to open up. You know, it, they they weren't really sure how to defend the king. And so they played a terrible move, king to f7. It's a blunder because they, they're just giving me the piece right back. And they, they so wanted to get the king to safety that they felt like it was worth sacrificing a piece. The best move, according to Stockfish, and I don't think I would have played this in a game either, is king takes e5. I mean, it just doesn't look like you should be able to play a move like that and not get checkmated. But turns out that was the best move for black. And the interesting thing here is that the black king has multiple paths to escape. One of the things about when the king comes forward into the center, you want to make sure that you don't let it go backwards and just hide. And that's kind of the problem that I have here. Like if I just throw in a random check, the king is just going to kind of run away. Check. And it kind of gets back to safety. Or if I start with a bishop check, same thing. It just goes back here and then it just runs and hides. And I don't really have a follow-up. The king's going to get away. So very interesting. This was the best move. But my opponent, like I said, kind of panicked a little bit and decided to just run with the king. So I said, okay, great. I'm happy. I take my piece back. And then I decided to go ahead and trade here as well. Because notice the king can't take because of the rook. The queen doesn't want to take because of the rook. And so it forces this move, which now the king is also exposed here, even if it does uh, run to g8 to hide. So I've got to be feeling pretty good here. I mean, I was feeling pretty good. Uh, instead of going pawn hunting, like I did here, Stockfish said, just bring the knight in. Just sink the knight in the center. It's going to be so much more powerful. <coughs> but I decided to just hunt for the pawn, and uh, I didn't quite realize that this was actually going to be an annoying move for me, because now the rook's under attack. But fine, let's keep going. He forces the queen trade, and here we go. In this end game where I'm up the extra pawn, which is good, I'm happy, but it's not really as great as it probably could have been. That's, I think, why queen h5 wasn't the best plan. All right, let's keep going. We ended up getting a bunch of trades here, and now we end up in this very interesting knight, <coughs> excuse me, this very interesting knight end game. And as you can see, it's equal, it's equal, two against two, two against two, except for this guy right here. And I was basically saying, I'm going to probably use that as a decoy at some point and try to hunt some of the other pawns if I can. And as soon as I saw h5, 
I noticed that that could be a target for me. So I played G3. If the pawn keeps pushing, I'll just take it and have a pass pawn. And then I said, I'm just going to maneuver my knight and go grab the pawn. Because this knight's kind of not in a good position to defend it. The king's not in a good position to defend it. I mean, the king and the knight are sort of blockading this guy, which is fine. But I'm going to go ahead and take this. Okay, great. That's what I did. Took the pawn. Feeling pretty good. And then I said, well, all right, let's push the H pawn. Now, I'm going to tell you something important here. And we're going to talk about this more later. But knights, generally speaking, are very bad at stopping the flank pawns. Okay, so the H pawn and the A pawn. If you have a pass pawn that's on the H or the A file against a knight, just push it because it's hard for the knight to deal with that. And it has to do with the fact that the knight is a short range piece. It needs to get close to the pawn, but it also can't jump on the other side because there's no more you know, files on the other side of this. So it doesn't have a lot of room to work with. And that's why these outside pass pawns can be one of the most annoying things for the knight to deal with. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. And here I had a nice little move. If you'd like to pause, what do you think I played in this position? If you had a chance to look at that, knight takes f5. And the idea is that the king can't take my knight because then the pawn is, is too far gone and it's going to become a queen. The knight can't stop it. So it was basically my knight was invincible even though it wasn't. You know, you, you can't take it. You have to keep the king there to stop the pawn. So now I've got two pawns. I've got this pawn as well. I'm feeling pretty good. And I made a decision here that maybe I didn't have to do. I decided to sacrifice my knight to go ahead and grab this pawn and actually go into that end game that you saw on the thumbnail with the three pawns against the knight. And in my mind, I was thinking, look, three pawns, it's gonna be, it's gonna be plenty to win the game. I didn't have to do that, of course. I could have just saved my knight, sacrificed this pawn instead, and maybe that would have been a little easier. But even so, I thought this was gonna be good enough. And Stockfish actually agrees with me and says, yes, this is a winning end game for white if you play it correctly. So here's what my plan was. And Stockfish kind of agrees with this, although I messed it up along the way. My plan was, look, this guy is an outside pass pawn. Like I just mentioned, it's very difficult for knights to stop those. And in addition to that, I'm able to set up my king somewhere over here, is what I was going for, to keep the knight from getting to the pawn, essentially. I'm using my king to box out the knight. Okay, so here, boom. And now look at this. The knight can't go there. You can't go there. You can't go here because my pawn is actually helping too. You could go here, but why? You don't want to go here because I'm still going to take you with my king. And it looks pretty tricky. Like, how's the knight going to actually stop the pawn, right? Okay, great. Knight to g4. My opponent is getting very clever, planning the fork. But I said, well, I don't really need to allow that. Why don't I just play d4 and take that away? My opponent brought the king over. And now I decided it was time to push this pawn. All right. And he attacks my pawn. And here... There's a number of ways that I could win. The computer just likes pushing the pawn right away. And I'll go ahead and show you. They want me to push it, allow this to get captured, push it again. And after the check, I just plant my king. There's really any number of places, but let's just say here. And how does the knight stop this? It can't. The knight can't, just can't get over there in time, right? That's it. Like, that's all I had to do. Just push the pawn, move my king to the right square, and the game is over. But instead, I, I kind of, I mean, it's a, it's a blitz game. I'm getting low on time, right? And in my mind, I was like, I don't really know if I want to give this pawn up because once I give that up, all the knight has to do is sacrifice. So I tried to hold on to the pawn. I tried to hold on to the pawn by playing d5. And this is where I started to get into trouble. Check. And the knight started to bug me. And I made a really, 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 really bad move. And I went right here. If you'd like to pause, why was this such a bad move? And how could black have saved the game from this moment right here? We've got a chance to look at that. The move is knight to b2 check. It's just a simple fork. And after I move, they just sack the knight. And then the king is actually just in time to gobble up this pawn and get over to this one before my king can do anything. And of course, it's not going to make it in time. The king can very easily stop it. And it's just a simple draw. And I just, yeah, I was just trying to get away from the checks. Also trying to hold on to this. I should have played king to d6. This is what Stockfish said, but I panicked. Lucky for me, my opponent didn't see it. Played knight to e5 and gave me another chance. <clears throat> and then this time I decided to do another blunder and I just gave up the pawn this way. In my mind, I was thinking, well, I can't get away from the checks. I didn't consider blocking the pawn for some reason. All right, so black takes it. And now the game is a draw with correct play. 
And it has to do with the fact that this knight is going to sacrifice itself for this pawn at some point. The king is going to stop my pawn. If I push this down, the king's just going to come over here and stop it. And it turns out that there's no way to force the knight away to where I can get a queen. You, you just can't do it. And as an illustration, this is kind of what happened in the game, actually. Eventually, Black decided to go over here with the king. Okay. And the knight is just, just in position to stop the pawn. And yes, I can attack the knight. But every time I do, the knight is going to hop around and threaten a fork. And this is the problem. This is why you can't win. If I ever push the pawn, bam, I get forked. I lose my pawn. And then the king takes here. It's it's just a draw, right? And you could try all you want. And that's what I did in the game. I just kept trying, moving my king to different places. There's always going to be this annoying little check. And they blockade the pawn. And then eventually they set up another fork, right? If you ever try to push the pawn, boom, there's a fork. And you just can't get away from it, all right? So... That is why uh, the game should have been a draw, but I figured, you know what, I'm going to just keep playing and see. Maybe they'll make a mistake, blunder the knight, and what actually ended up happening, I had to sacrifice that pawn eventually. They did blunder the knight, well, not really blunder. They sacrificed it eventually. Long game, sorry, here we go. But it's still a draw. It's still a draw because, bam, the king cuts me off. But it wasn't a draw because I won on time. So it, sh it should have been a draw, but I did get the win, uh, not in the, the best way. Obviously, I didn't play that very well. But um, yeah, the reason it's still a draw is because my king is just stuck. I can't ever get away from in front of my pawn, right? If I go here, black goes here. If I go here, black goes here. And even if I push the pawn, it doesn't really matter. I'm still stuck. And eventually, I have to just allow the stalemate. All right, so fascinating end game. I don't think I've ever had a game like this before where I had the three pawns like that, and I was trying to, you know, win, or was it like here, I think? Anyway, um, hope you learned something about the Knights and the end game and had fun watching that game, and I'll see you guys next time. Stay sharp, play smart, and take care.